I want you to say a, an encouraging word to students who are going through school, grad school, PhD work, and they're in turmoil because of what they're being told on one side about how evolution in, uh, impacts their faith, and now they're hearing this information. You can remember struggling with these issues. What would you say to encourage them in terms of following the evidence wherever it's going to lead them? Well, I, I do have a lot of conversations with young uh, scientists, uh, grad students, uh, students in their undergraduate years, and if they're skeptical of Darwinism or if they have a religious faith, if they are theists of some kind, Jews, Christians, other, they will often feel that, the, the, that they're the odd man out in their science classes. The, many professors hold a naturalistic or materialistic worldview. The professors often think uh, and will say openly that science properly understood supports such a worldview, or many of them are openly atheistic. We'll say, you know, like Richard Dawkins believes that, that the science properly understood uh, supports an atheistic perspective. And so students in classes with professors who are overtly opposed to any kind of uh, theistic belief will often feel uh, you know, kind of intimidated and feel like maybe they're the person that didn't get the memo. And I think actually that this is a tremendous time to be, to be going into science uh, if you're interested in the big questions and in particular if you have a theistic perspective because I think we're seeing evidence of design not only in biology but also in physics and in cosmology. And I, I think that um, we often get the opposite perspective. You know, the, in the, you have the, the, the science popularizers are, are going to say, you know, science supports the new atheism or science makes belief in God untenable or uh, things like that. But when you dig into the evidence, I think there's a powerful case for intelligent design. And I personally think that the evidence doesn't just point to a designer generically but instead there's a powerful case to be made from the evidence in biology but also in physics and cosmology for a designer that has the same attributes, the very attributes that Jews and Christians have long ascribed to God. Uh, from the biology, I think we see the evidence of a designing intelligence who's acted in the history of life. From the physics, I think we see in what was called the fine-tuning evidence, evidence of design from the very beginning of the universe. And in cosmology, I, I, I see evidence of a, of a definite beginning to the universe that seems to point to the need for a transcendent form of causation, a cause beyond matter, space, time, and energy. And so when, I think when you add all that up, I think there's a very strong case for theism to be made. And you and I have, have talked about that in a, a previous series mm -hmm. of interviews uh, where I make that case in, in more detail. So right. I, I think rather than uh, science uh, properly understood undermining faith, I think it actually provides a, um, evidence for faith, maybe not a proof in the, in, the, in the logically certain sense, but I think strong evidence that is uh, very friendly to theistic belief. So I think it's a wonderful time to be a person of faith and a person who's interested in the natural world. And so I would really encourage students to get into science and also uh, find out the other side of the argument. You know, they're, they're often, the universities are still dominated by a class of professors who are, are typically going to be more of a naturalistic or, or materialistic mindset. But there are a, a lot of really good scientists and philosophers of science who are looking at the questions uh, in a different way and who are making a case for a more theistic friendly understanding of science. And uh, so dig in. It's, uh, it's an exciting time to be interested in these questions.